let me introduce myself. I am uh, Nitin Nagpal. I represent OEM business for Happy India uh, for complete pan India region. I will take you all through with uh, a small concept called dynamic space, which has been uh, developed by Bloom. We represent Bloom in India for our, uh, for our uh, kitchen products. Although this this entire concept is quite lengthy in, its, in itself because the way it has been developed, it has got a lot of studies inside. But as Deepakji said, uh, we will not have too much of time to to explain everything in detail. So I have skipped out some some parts of the presentation along with some videos because then will otherwise will go too lengthy. So I'll just go with some slides and uh, try to explain as much as I can. So what we will go through is there are two aspects which will have uh, which uh, be, which will be covered in this presentation. Information about dynamic space, what it is, and how it is taken forward into the marketing concept. Okay. Blue as as company from Austria, they have been developing products which are suitable for kitchen industry. But what did it take for them to actually get into kitchen assets? So how do, how are they related to kitchens? Because uh, they, they make uh, drawer systems, clap systems, and hinges. Drawer systems and hinges are the product categories where which can be used in any kind of furniture. So why is it only kitchens? Okay. So this entire concept, when they started off with this journey, and this, this entire product range when it evolved into the kitchen industry to the to, to be specific. So they found themselves more interesting for the for the purpose of what to innovate, when to innovate and how to innovate. And why is it even required? So this led to several researches and innovations around throughout the kitchen industry and furniture industry in totality, which through which they, they, they developed a lot of concepts. So in nutshell, a lot of research activities has, has been through all this entire research program. What we did, we did about a survey of about more than 500 kitchens. That was the time of April 2014. That, uh, so the service was conducted not only in India or in Austria, but worldwide in different, different countries where they are present in different homes. What it was, what was done? As you can see in the picture, that uh, one colleague is filming them and somebody is cooking. So this was the concept was laid down in the prospect wherein uh, a lady. I mean, we went to a kitchen, okay, not necessarily a kitchen which was done by us. Anyway, we don't do kitchens as such. So, uh, so it was a kitchen by anybody. Could be uh, one of our colleagues. Could be one of our relatives. Could be some known different customer who would have bought some product from us or may not be our products. Okay. So it was purely an anonymous kitchen. Okay. So what we did was that we, we introduced our concept to the, those customers that we want to kind of do a research. So we want to adapt and film their habits, what they do, how they do, how do they cook, what is what are different essentials, what they use and how is the entire workflow managed. So this entirely uh, was con uh, was filled with a, with a certain concept where each and every cabinet was numbered because you can't remember the drawer which drawer was open and how many times and all that. So every cabinet and every drawer was numbered and was recorded. Yeah. So it was even recorded in a, in a way that we could open that those drawers and systems and we could click pictures with those respective numbers so that when when we film them, we know which drawer is getting opened and how many times and what is there inside. So then, they, then the entire data was collected and analysts were uh, made sit around to analyze the entire concept and few studies which came, which, uh, which came out. So what, what we saw was that uh, in certain kitchen observations that there are some of the drawers, some of the cabinets in several part of the world, the world uh, in kitchens. This is how these products or these consumables, these, product, uh, these items were arranged in many of the cases. Yeah. 
So I would, you'll be, you'll be surprised to know that hardly a few kitchens were fully organized kitchens. So we were actually blessed to have such unorganized kitchen, which which led that study to go even further deeper. Yeah. So some cabinets, how 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 the arrangements are made, and I'm sure we can all relate to these kind of unorganized situation in our kitchens too in India, right? Workflows. So what was earlier it was storage requirement, how do we store our products generally, our consumables? And what is our workflow? Which means if if I am cooking here, how and where my other essentials are stored. So as you see that the, 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 the purpose here we took was a pregnant woman who is trying to cook something and it, she is being moving around here and there quite a lot of time wherein chopping board is somewhere else, cooking items are somewhere else and storage items are somewhere else. So she is just moving around and around and doing her job. Okay. Good or bad, we will come Another workflow wherein one in one kitchen, not a good kitchen, so <laughs> a sad place, wherein uh, a lady is trying to find something out. Okay. And this, I would say that this is the most available situation in our homes at, at this time. Even I do also have that. Okay. Where we bend down and we try to find something from the behind. So something if you want to take it out, it takes a lot of energy, effort to take something out from that. Where on the other side, when it is organized well, so it hardly takes any, any effort to get something out of the kitchen. So quite a big happy situation. One more difficulty in usage. How do we how how do we plan our kitchen in, in, in a way where, where we where we, where we get comfort? Okay. So if you look at the position it says that dishwasher is placed at such an end, dishwasher is is a product which like dishwasher is a product which gives you ability to use it from both the sides. So you can actually take take out and put put your containers and utensils from the both, both the sides. Then in, in this position if you see it's a wrong design or I would say not an effective design. Yeah. Where a lady who is trying to take out some utensils from the dishwasher and trying to put it on the other side and store, but she doesn't have space to kind of stand properly. So not an effective design. One more example that was observed. So in an island kitchen, how much should be the space in between the passage? Okay. What is the convenient? She is trying to bend down and take something out. Now, she has a drawer, which means she is not, she doesn't need to bend down, take something from the back of the cabinet or the shelf, out of the shelf, but she, is, she doesn't have enough of space where she can actually bend down properly or open the drawer conveniently and use the stuff. And the, the way the drawer looks like, it's a little large drawer. So which means if she can, she's standing at the back on, uh, on, on one side, she can't take the stuff from the other side. So she had to go. But there is no space, I mean, space available. Product in reality. So what we did was then, at Blue, we have a kitchen observation setup. Okay. What we do is, we also, uh, uh, invite certain set of people, certain set of families to come and cook. Okay. Where they, they come as a family and they, they do a cooking exercise. Yeah. So they, which means the products which have been designed by us and they, they are not, uh, I would say, they are, those products are not introduced to those families, what they are and what they are for. Okay. We just let them use how they want to. And we film them as well. With which, what we do is, we observe even when they don't know these products, how they are using those products. In what ways they are using. Is, are they finding it comfortable or not? And later on, what we exercised was that some of the customers, some of the people who were invited, were finding it really easy, really comfortable. Yeah. And there was even time when we introduced them with some other products. And then they were, they were allowed to use it once again. 
in due course of this exercise, what happened? They they found it even more convenient after that. So first, same kitchens, no introduction of products. After that, introduction of certain products. Why they are used? Why they are being kept there? How they are being kept like that? And then they found it even more easier. So they they are consume your own consumer gets quite acclimatized to the product. Why they are like that? What is the purpose behind it? And how convenient it can be for them to have like. It was developed, although they didn't have any electronics in it, but it was developed to access that today if I am at 37 years of age, what happens if I have a kitchen, I, I do a kitchen now. Usually any, be it Indian or anybody outside, everybody would want a kitchen to last at least 10 years. That's the minimum number of years that everybody would definitely want. So what happens after 10 years? How will this kitchen still be with, there with me with the, with the different set of products, with different set of design, will still serve me the way I want to? Which means after 10, 20 years, if I, if, if not, if there's no question of it, I will get older, right? I will get older than what I am today. So my, I may have less energy, my muscles may worn out with something, uh, my eyesight may get a little less. Several things may take place during this time. So what happens then? How will this kitchen still be with me and how I will be convenient at even at that time? So this is how this, this entire concept was developed. So people who are wearing this uh, uh, dress, there are certain kind of elements into the dress. <coughs> I wish we could show you, but unfortunately I can't. So, uh, so this dress allows you to kind of, uh, it has some kind of weights on your jackets so it, it actually allows you not to uh, move your hand freely yeah. so which means you can actually visualize how will that have how uh, something happens when when somebody is old enough to when they are not able to carry something yeah. and the skin gets some hydrated uh, feeling over the, over the skin and uh, the helmet allows you to kind of uh, put down your vision side so it doesn't allow you to kind of uh, identify true colors of uh, uh, any product. Yeah, we did. Uh, we recently did some this exercise with some good customers. So and we were there at you, okay. And uh, I am quite sure that uh, the experience was phenomenal because I was seeing that uh, that this ex this entire exercise by myself. I did not wear this, but uh, one of our one of the partners was wearing it, and they they were not able to identify true colors of some products. Okay. So it was evident that how it affects. So this this entire gadget helps us help room to identify product to develop product. What happens when we get to from now to that level? So they are actually if, if you look at they are actually thinking not only for today or just tomorrow. They are, they are thinking for the lifetime ahead. That's what the product is in general. So what what goes here is that uh, we concentrate on maximum ergonomics, which means your comfort, your use, how your how much your hand should extend, how much your hand should go up, up how much it can be, how much you should travel in between. So that's this is where you keeps on working. Quality of motion, as we said, freedom of motion for all, which means when you when you work around, so you have complete freedom of what you want to do, but still at ease. So this this age explorer helps us to determine our needs, what would I want, how the product should look like, test existing products, include finding the new product development, so that is always connected. So this entire experiences of this requirement research was actually collaborated from kitchen history, from new kitchen observations, ergonomic studies, storage space studies, age explorers, print study, workshop, and worldwide web information collection. So everything was combined, collected. It's not, I would say it's not was, it's, it is even today and it will continue forever. So every information is being collected, collected and researched, rethought, 
a way look into what can be done. This is being developed every now and then. So every kitchen, I would say, and you would always, believe, you would also believe, every kitchen has two sides. One, beauty, functionality. Yeah. I, you would believe that. How many of you would like this kitchen? No, Probably most of us. Yeah. But does that really mean this kitchen would have functionality? May or may not. So when we go into it, when we understand what a functionality is, okay, this is how that functionality looks like. Which means somebody who is cooking has an access to everything. Your cooking is just next to you, your washing is just next to you, behind you have plenty more storage, and then you have uh, other storages as well, very much at your convenient distance. Where you can cook quite faster and efficient. And still you don't get too much time and you enjoy it. So features of a practical kitchen, we, we, we believe that uh, any kitchen should have convenient space around, free of motion and um, good work. The dynamic space allows us to do all this. A convenient workflow looks like just, just about this. Where a lady who wants to wash some uh, vegetables is just there, immediately she puts it onto the chopping board and the cutlery drop is just, just next to that. So she can just take out your knife and everything and just go cutting. Immediately, just in two steps, goes to the cooking area and starts cooking. That's how the workflow is coming in pretty much. The typical activities in the kitchen, storage, cooking and serving. That's how typical activities are. What we do generally, we clean the dishes, store the shopping, <coughs> clean the table, baking the cake, set the table, load the dishwasher, preparing menu, preparing the work, and so many other activities that keep happening in the kitchen. So, from our studies, these are five zones in the kitchen which define a good process. Cooking zone, preparation zone, cleaning zone, uh, uh, washing zone. Yeah. For example, this is uh, just an uh, exercise and workshop which was created by Blue. This is roughly about 250 kg of material which was put in together with uh, understood to the consumers that what would they want, what would they have in their kitchen. So this was completely done with the exercise of uh, several customers put together. So this was segregated later on in a different zone, from a different point of view, that what belongs to what product category. And then this was further put into the zone system, which means consumable. Consumable is always a product range wherein you just consume every day almost. Could be spices, could be vegetables, uh, sorry, those Kellogg's and stuff. Then we have non consumable just a storage item, which is like a small container, glasses and spoons and stuff like that. Cleaning, obviously, cleaning agents, cleaning products. Then we have preparation, which includes your knives and your spatula and all that stuff. Then cooking, even to see similar product ranges there. So this was entirely divided into different zones. So the same stuff was divided into different product areas so that you can just continue with, uh, putting into different zones and plan the kitchen. So this is how a typically a good kitchen would do when you would keep it good for uh, consumption, provision, so a long term storage which you don't need every day, which is probably a long term storage, so maybe for a week or a month the way any household has. Not even consumer plates and stuff, groceries, so you can just uh, stop. Cleaning, the cleaning agents, how they are stopped well into the sink area. And preparation, none next to cooking and uh, cutting area, the area. And then you have a cooking, so it should be next to the preparation. So, on your left, 
you would look like uh, our kitchen which is without zone arrangement, which means your cooking is divided into different <coughs> portions, washing is divided into different portions, and non consumables are divided into different portions. We're in, we're in a dynamic space kitchen, allows you to organize everything into a specific zone where it is very easy for you to reach out and plan and uh, uh, do your work. Typically, kitchen without zone arrangement, you would see that how clustered the walking areas are, workflow areas are, how much walking is happening around. Whereas the same set of, uh, same length of kitchen, but with a dynamic space arrangement, you can see the, how less you have to walk. So typically, there was a study even a day, even then, that in a non-organized kitchen, typically 264 meters per day is walking, which is about 1927 kilometers in 20 years. With proper planned kitchen, that was reduced to 1530 kilometers in 20 years. Yeah. So probably 20 percent less walking on the kitchen in the plan. Doing the same job, but in a plan manner. So this is, this, these are not just assumptions, these are pure studies done by Bloom to analyze each and every step. So this, this, these figures are, figures are not just hypothetical figures, just to please everybody. Yeah? But it, it's a study which is done, it's proven. As you see in the picture, hinges, cabinet, we also sell hinges. Okay? But that's one product which is good. But how we make our, our consumers life even better? is as you see the, 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 the hinge door, when you open the hinge door, it always falls in your uh, vision area. Yeah? You have to kind of uh, take a little back step, open the door first and then proceed further and then get inside to find out something. There is an Avengers uh, flap system which allows you to kind of take the door away from your vision area, choose what you want, let the door open, let the flap open till the time you want you want to use it and use it and then close it later on. So that's how it, it just goes. In base cabinet, you can see how one is uh, trying to put, put the stuff out and that, uh, how one is able to use the power system convenient. Mm -hmm. So these are economical levels, we can get into details even later. So full extension and part extension allows us to kind of access whatever material is kept inside the drawer, how we, we can make use of it convenient to put the whole system out and store the good for them. Better organization of different drawer systems, internal organizers, how you can store your product, you can easily take them out rather than in a cluttered way and you waste time in finding what is there. Space optimization, so space towers, in a different uh, pull out system, you can just pull, pull the stuff out, how and when, whenever you want, in a convenient way. This is, these are some requirements which, which I have shown. So we even segregated them off on used material and sell them used materials, when and what is required. So a lot of studies have gone into this. Approximately 50 percent less space if that drawer is combined. So the larger drawer gives you more space. Similarly, up to 30 space, 30 percent space, you get more in a full extension draw system. Around 55 percent storage, you get more in high draw, high 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 fronted draw system, wherein when you do a less fronted draw. So this is entire, uh, I would say, a case of uh, how we plan our kitchen, how we propose solutions to our consumer, how we look at them, a right partner, and how do we suggest the product, not just by selling the product, but how do we make their life easier.